Welcome to the uh, College Football Prediction Roundtable presented here on the Bleach Report app where we're going to give you all our picks for this week. Uh, week three of the college football season, guys. We are back and better than ever. Um, I honestly don't want to see how we did last week, so we're going to go ahead and uh, pretend like that did not happen. Kidding, we're, we're going to have to do it. But I am Jay, one of your hosts at Unfair Sports. We've got Steven from Fanatic Perspective, Ty around the table sports and Nick from Nino's corner gentlemen happy uh Friday how are you feeling today outstanding feeling good Jay feeling good man um big week two for Texas so Nino and I are coming in here in very good spirits could very be good spirits yes sir <laughs> yes sir Ty same so we're gonna hey go ahead and put the graphic up let's look at last week we know that uh yeah these uh locks Ooh. we had congratulations to nick and steven who's tied for first look at him sitting at boys. second and 15 and ties third which obviously the voodoo that he was leveraging on us is no longer working yeah i um the struggle was real when it comes to some of these uh picks that i put out there yeah i want to take a quick victory lap nick and steven is ty oh, really man. have 11 points yeah <laughs> I'm, I'm a little confused because we all had the same spread picks last week so i'm i'm kind of confused by this whole point thing and how that but that's neither here nor there i know i'm in last but i didn't i, I didn't <laughs> okay. it don't matter oh, wow. don't, don't matter what, what we know is Ty's probably going to go on this massive run over the next, like, three weeks and ruin everybody's day. So let's go ahead and start jumping into these games. We all know that you all want to know it. We've got 10. We've got some big picks. We've got some locks. Let's dive into game number one. And that's going to be Arizona and Kansas State. I'm going to be honest. I'm pretty excited about this game. This is going to be a big one, right? Kansas State is a seven-point favorite at the crib as Arizona comes in, you know, their first time in the Big 12, actually. I'm looking at this game, man. <clears throat> I'm going to be honest. The struggle was real with this one just because last week Kansas State had a scary game against Tulane. They had an opportunity to lose, and – Shockingly, they found a way to win it. So Arizona coming over as a seven-point dog with the over-under at 60 and a half. I think I'm around with Arizona. I really like Noah Fafita. I am T-Mac is out here killing it. 12 catches, 315 yards, four touchdowns. I just think that they are one of the better teams in the country with their quarterback situation. And wide receiver situation, they just need to go execute. I think that they can do what Tulane didn't and close out. Give me Arizona. Steven, who you got? So, Jay, one theme that I'm going to kind of set today is, is recur a little bit recurring here is 2023 quarterbacks. And and Kansas State, because that, that quarterback class with Arch Manning and your guy Jackson Arnold uh, and, and some of the, these guys, Nico, Kansas State has one in Avery Johnson, and he's really, really good. Um, I was really impressed with his performance and moxie he showed in the two-lane game. And the kind of the reason that you're going with Arizona is why I'm going with Kansas State, because I think that two-lane game and the way two-lane was able to really push the ball downfield and threaten Kansas State, I think that actually prepares Kansas State for this, this attack that they're going to see tonight. But the thing is, Arizona has to go to Manhattan, bro. And Manhattan's a different animal on a Friday night. You know we came from Big 12 soil, Jay. And it's That's different on, on a non-Saturday. So for that reason, with Avery moving around the way he's moving and them getting tested last week by Tulane, I think that actually prepares them for this Arizona game. Give me Kansas State, but I think Arizona does cover I think it's minus seven. I think Arizona does cover that, but give me Kansas State here. Yep. Minus seven for Kansas State. Ty, who you got? Ty, I think Ty, you're, you're mute. mute. I don't know how that happened, but okay. I'm taking Kansas State <laughs> as well. 
Um, and it's you're right, Jay. They had the close game against Tulane. And I think that's more to do with Tulane being a really good football team. That's part mm-hmm. of the reason why I think OU versus Tulane is so interesting because Tulane is exponentially better than the two teams Oklahoma has faced. But Arizona also didn't look that great against Northern Arizona. Um, that was not exactly a banner game for them. And now they're going on the road to Kansas State, who will be by far and about the best team they have played. Whereas Kansas State has at least had that test game against an opponent who's a who's a quality, quality opponent. Um, so I, I like Kansas State, but I do think this is going to be a great game. Nick, who you riding with? Man, give me Kansas State, man. Hey, look, man, Kansas State has rushed for over 200 yards a game in each of their last two games. Arizona allowed New Mexico to rush for more than 200 yards against them. I like Avery Johnson, too. He's really good with his legs as well. I think Kansas State's going to win this game in the trenches. All right. Simple enough. Next game, next item up for bid. We're going to ride with Alabama and Wisconsin. So Bama travels up to Wisconsin. It's going to be an early game at 11 a.m. Right now, the Tide, the Crimson Tide, are riding in at Minus 16, so a 16-point favorite on the road with an over-under at 49-and-a-half right now. That over-under has dropped from the 52-and-a-half that it opened at. Woo, that's a big drop. Eric, you know, of course, Alabama had their struggles in the beginning of the game against USF, even though I kind of attribute that to Alex Golish coming from Tennessee and USF just wanting to be a pain, a thorn in the side of Alabama. So going up there against Luke Fickle's squad of Wisconsin, Give me Bama. I think that they roll in this game. Tyler Van Dyke is the quarterback at Wisconsin. I've seen his movies before. I understand what they typically end at. It's pretty predictable. But I do think that Luke Fickle is going to do some special stuff. It's going to be more of a challenge. I don't know if Bama covers this spread. I'm going to go Wisconsin covers this spread. But I think Alabama does grind this out and get themselves back on track. Give me the tie. Steven? I, I, I want to cede some of my time to Ty. A shameless plug here. We do a show on YouTube on Wednesdays called the SEC Connect, uh, the four of us, plus our, another OU brethren and Chris. And uh, Ty wasn't on, neither was Jay. And I wanted to ask you guys about level of concerns for your football teams coming off of week two. So I want to cede some of my time there. I'm picking Alabama because I think they're going to bounce back from the tough game against USF. USF, Todd Orlando had some really special schemes and things that he did defensively that I don't think Fickle and them will be able to replicate um, now that it's been put out there. And I don't see Bama just having the goofy fumbles and random turnovers and just, you know, it looked like a little, you know, bloopers video at times before they got serious and ran away with it. Kalen DeBoer, too good. I've never seen Bama go up north like this before either. So, Ty, let me know if I'm wrong, if, if y'all have traveled like this, non-neutral. Uh, but give me Bama here. I, and I do think they cover, Jay. I have not covered. Okay. Good stuff, Ty. Our resident Bama fan. Talk to us. Yeah, Bama and they cover. Um, I'm going to tell you why. So, to answer your question first, Stephen, I think you make a great point. I think USF has caught Alabama at the right time two years in a row. And let's really give some credit to USF. They run a veer and shoot offense that you're not going to see a whole lot. The quarterback understands how to run it beautifully. And defensively, Todd Orlando lives by the blitz, dies by the blitz. USF runs the most plays per minute at three plays per minute in all of college football. And they blitz at some of the highest rates. And I believe that's at a 63%. Alabama was without their left tackle. He's banged up. They moved their potential All-American left guard to left tackle. Brand new left guard. Right tackle situation wasn't completely ironed out. The second they made the switch at right tackle, bang, 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 three touchdowns right down the field. They were able to go and really hold them off. The one thing that this Bama defense, though, they're holding opponents to like under 105 yards through the air. This Bama secondary has been pretty good, and styles make fights. I know several of us here on the panel love combat sports. Styles Mm -hmm. make fights. 
Wisconsin isn't going to be able to blitz at that same rate because that's not what they do. And you're not going to abandon your identity just on a one week basis. Wisconsin defensively wants to run a 3-3-5, but they don't have the personnel to do so. So they're in this modified 4-2-5. And then they switch it when they get into the red zone to a, a different defense. But I don't think that they possess the same stylistic ability to hurt Bama in the same way that USF did. And I actually said that going into the USF game, that I thought USF was a bit more of a challenge. So I think look for Alabama to establish the run. Level of concern, last thing I'll say, if they handle this weekend, Stephen, my level of concern is very low. If we see another sloppy performance riddled with penalties, we'll have a different conversation come Wednesday. So it looks like uh, Bama did travel to Penn State 13 years ago. This has been a while. Uh, I've slept a lot since then, so I would have definitely forgot that. <laughs> Nick, what you got? Hey, man, give me Bama, man. You know, so look, Bama controlled these first two games. They killed the line of scrimmage. They've rushed for over 500 yards combined in the first two games. Miro's a problem with his legs, too, as well. I think, you know, like, like Todd said, Styles make fights, man. Wisconsin's going to want to come in here and go mano y mano, and I just don't think that they got the depth to go mano y mano with Alabama. Alabama's going to run away with this game. Uh, give me Bama. All right. Cross the, cross the board. Let's go ahead and fade us. Next game, <laughs> we got Arkansas and Mich Arkansas State at versus Michigan. Michigan coming off that loss to Texas. Michigan is a 23 point favorite. And I'm gonna be honest, they'll figure it out. They're gonna run, they're gonna win this game, right? It's Arkansas State. As much as I like Butch Jones and appreciate what he has done there. I mean, they're 2-0 and this year. They went to a bowl game last year after a drubbing against Oklahoma to start the season 73-0. Pretty impressed that they're able to bounce back the way they did. But I think Michigan rolls in this game. They, they're going to be able to establish the line of scrimmage and run the ball, things they couldn't do against Texas. Um, I think the defense steps up in this one to try to figure out their identity. And they've got to figure out their quarterback, in which hopefully by then they decide to, you know, go with the, the, the better quarterback and make him throw the ball. Mm -hmm. We'll see if that happens. But I'm going to go with Michigan in this one. Just keep it simple. Steven, who you got? Yeah, I think Michigan bounces back this week. This is an opportunity to, with, you know, Fresno and Texas are a tough start to the season. So it looks like Fresno is going to be very, very good out in the Mountain West this year. Um, we know what Texas is. So that's a really tough start to the season. Sh Sharon Moore getting his contract settled this week, I think, is another, you know, kind of plus intangible type plus that you get. Um and I think, you know, just trying to establish that physicality and that brand again, um, you have your kids' attention now. If, 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 if you were still on that hangover from winning a national championship, even some of their better guys who looked a little gassed in the Texas game, Mason Graham comes to mind, Josiah Stewart comes to mind, hands on hips. I, I think that this is the week you start to get back to looking true to form and getting themselves ready for Big Ten play. Give me Michigan here, and I think Michigan will cover and get decent quarterback play uh, in this game. Ty, who you got? I have Michigan. Um, I I don't know what true to form looks like for this Michigan team, though. Um, I just don't think that they are near the Michigan of last year. Uh, quarterback play leaves a lot to be desired through two weeks. Defensively, they, they have a solid defense, No, not taking that away from them. And that's not to say that they won't be a good team. It's just that if you are going to be a team that wants to shake some things up, you got to start showing it. You haven't so far. This is a perfect week to start letting people know, hey, it's just early season hiccups. Give me Michigan. Nick? Hey, man, real simple. Give me Michigan in this one too as well. I think you look, man, they should run the ball pretty well here. Uh, you know, Edwards should, you know, have a decent game this game too as well. I just don't think, you know, that, uh, you know, I think Michigan just has just more talent on this team. They got more depth as well. This should be just a pretty easy game for them. All right, let's go to the next game. This is the SEC game of the week. I don't care what anybody mm -hmm. tells you. This is it. LSU traveling to South Carolina. This is a big one, right? South LSU walks in here at a six and a half point favorite with the over under sitting at 48 and a half. The spread opened at eight and a half, though, which 
means that it has dropped two points, which is pretty high for this, right? LSU, you know, of course, bounced back-ish after the USC loss. That Nichols State game was not pretty. And then South Carolina gave it to Kentucky. I mean, they mm-hmm. gave it to them and more than they even wanted. I'm going to go ahead and ride with LSU, though, in this game. I think Nussmeyer figures it out. I think that even though the defense struggles, South Carolina's offense struggles to me. I haven't really seen an offense that's been consistent yet. Um, Sellers is trying, right? He's trying to figure things out. The run game is okay, but this offense has just been on the struggle bus, and I think Nussmeyer is going to put it all together. So give me LSU to win this one. I think they cover the spread and win it by seven. Steven. Yeah, LSU is not going to lose two games to two different USC's this year. So give me <laughs> LSU here. That'd be nasty work by BK if that happened, <laughs> by the way. That'd be nasty work. But uh, Garrett Nussmeyer, I think if you get the Garrett Nussmeyer that played in Vegas and that offense, they just got to be disciplined. And, you know, I think this they're going to start – they started – Started getting Caden Durham some snaps last week, running back out of Duncanville, freshman running back, who I think over time will become that guy for them. So they started getting him in the mix a little bit after the obvious injury to John Emery Jr., who swore his ACL. But LSU, it's it's discipline for them on both sides of the ball because they have the personnel to, you know, deal with Rocket Sanders and all those guys on on USC who To be fair, USC was terrible week one, and then they went out there and put it on Kentucky. And, Mm -hmm. you know, that we'll we'll talk Kentucky later on because they may be outright fraudulent. But LSU, I think they reestablished themselves. I think Nussmeyer has a really big game. I think, you know, Lacey and those guys offensively, they look good. And I think you will walk away from this game, LSU's defense making a little bit of noise, Coach Baker, starting to get things going there uh, in the Bayou. Even though I know it's at SC. Good point. Ty, who you got? Yeah, this one was a really hard one for me. And I bounced back and forth multiple different times because you have strength on strength, weakness on weakness. Neither team can run the ball. South Carolina is averaging less than four yards. I think it's like a 2.8 yards per carry. Um, That being said, I'm taking LSU, and here's my reasoning. I don't, I know that USC has a great defensive front. I don't know what your secondary is like. And yes, you, you made the Kentucky offense look bad. The Kentucky offense is bad, right? Like there, there's no two ways around that. So was it your secondary or was it a quarterback who looked like we were playing 1919 style SEC football? It regressed so bad. Um, At the end of the day, I have to go with the quarterback that I think in the situation can outright win it. And yes, South Carolina has got unbelievable talent on this edge. Dylan Stewart might be the best edge rusher in the nation as a true freshman. LSU hasn't given up a sack. So this is what I say, strength on strength, weakness on weakness. And Jay, before I pass it, I think that one of the reasons the spread has dropped is there was supposed to be last night even it looked like it was going to be some bad weather at the stadium today it looks like the Mm. weather is clearing up but i think the spread is dropping because they're looking at this and neither team can run the ball if their lives depended on it or at least thus far they haven't been able to run the ball if their lives depended on it now that the weather is clearing up i wonder if we see more movement Makes sense. I wonder if LSU is going to have to pull out that uh, freshman uh, running back in order to try to figure out something. Nino, who you got? I got LSU, man. So this means LSU's going to lose, right? Uh, you know, since we all picked them. <laughs> <laughs> Thetis! Dylan Stewart. Dylan Stewart about to have five sacks. He about to go. He about to go crazy. Look here, man. LSU has one of the best O lines here in the country, um, but is is very intriguing that they can't run the ball with that great line, right? So I look for somebody to be able to run the ball this week. Hopefully LSU can do it, man. But I got LSU. I trusted Nuss a lot in this game, even though Dylan Stewart is a bad man, man. But give me LSU. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He is a bad man. All right, next game. Let's fly through this one. We've got the Notre Dame Fighting Irish traveling to play against 
the Purdue Boilermakers heading to West Lafayette, Indiana. I'm not sure how far of a travel that is for them, but Notre Dame's a nine and a half point favorite in this game. Mm. They're nine and a half point <laughs> favorites in this game. Um, with a 47 and a half total in this game. I, I'm trying to figure out. They're a nine and a half point favorite in this after last week's situation. Now, granted, we do know Notre Dame has talent on their roster, right? They have a very high blue chip ratio and the expectation they figured out. Raleigh Leonard has two picks, but ain't passed for a touchdown yet. That is interesting. So <laughs> I'm gonna have to go with Notre Dame, man. This feels like a straight up trap by Vegas. The spreads this high. Everybody's gonna take Purdue because of what happened last week. Once you in, and I think it's uh to quote Colin Cowherd, when a team embarrasses themselves on national television, the next week they somehow show out. So I'm gonna go ahead and take Notre Dame to win that. And I think they actually cover the spread. I don't know how, but they will do it. Steven. I think some of this, Jay, and I think you asked some good questions. I think some of this is a result of the mystery around Purdue as well. Uh, they've only played mm -hmm. one game so far. Mm -hmm. So they've had technically two weeks to get ready for Notre Dame to come to them. Hudson card, you know, we got, I got to give a shout out to former Texas quarterback, former Lake Travis quarterback, Hudson card, 24 of 25 for 275 and four touchdowns in week one. So there, Jay, there's some concern here. If, if we're just looking at efficiency of what Purdue did to, you know, to Indiana state in week one, we got to say that as well. But I, I Notre Dame can't be trusted but I think last week was that Marshall moment, unfortunately, for Marcus Freeman. It happened again. I do like the fact that he picked up the Northern Illinois off coach's offer to review the tape with him. The Northern Illinois, for those who don't know, he actually reached out to Marcus Freeman after the game and said, I would love to show you why I beat you, right? Go over that film with you uh, to, 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 you know, I want better for you. So, I th you know, some people may take that as disrespect. But, you know, some, some brothers were looking out for some brothers. So with that being said, give me Notre Dame. I'm not picking them to cover, though. I don't – that offense – I got to see more from the offense. But I think Notre Dame somehow pulls this thing out um, against Purdue. Go ahead. Yeah, coach and fraternity taking care of each other. Ty, what you got? Taking care of each other? <laughs> That'd be like if Anderson Silva called Forrest Griffin and said, this is how I whooped you in this fight that's that's dastardly that's something i'm gonna take notre dame um but this was another one guys there were a few games this week that kept me up and this was one of them hudson card is a veteran quarterback notre dame that offense has got to get it clicking yes your defense has some players but if you can't score this is 2024 i like my rhyme scheme there but i'm going to take notre dame in this game i, I think Bars. that you you have to blow teams out from here on out if you have any hope of getting into the playoffs. And uh, what better way to start than this weekend? That's the one. Nick, wrap us up. I'm going against the grain on this one. Give me Purdue, man. I'm taking Purdue to win this game. I'll tell you why. Notre Dame could not pass the ball at all. All right? That, that win that they got, that great win in week one, looks like fool's gold right now because we're seeing what A&M looks like too as well. Right. And so look here, man, I got Purdue shocking the world. It's it's at home too as well. Right. So I got them winning this game, man. I like Hudson Carr too. Um, but like Ty said, man, Notre Dame cannot score points. And if you can't score points with with teams, you're not going to win. I don't care how great your defense is. This isn't like the vaunted 85 Bears defense, man. So I got Purdue shocking the world in this game. I got Notre Dame going to one and two. And I got that first win in the season against TAMU looking like fool's gold. Ooh, we, yeah, he, he's going really against the grain. All right, <clears throat> next game, we've got Tulane coming to Norman, Oklahoma to play against the Oklahoma Sooners. The Sooners right now are a 13-point favorite with a scoring total of 46 and a half in perfect weather. Um, that spread just screams trapped for me because about 90% of the all the action is on Tulane right now. So... To answer your question, Stephen, I'm going to take Oklahoma in this game, of course. The big problem that Oklahoma's seeing on the offensive side of the ball is you come in with the young quarterback, 
and a young offensive line. And we all know that coming into the season. But then the your safety net, which is your top four returning wide receivers, none of them have played yet. You also deal with three injuries on the offensive line. Jackson Arnold has had four centers in three games. Think about that. Four centers in three games. Not very helpful to a young quarterback's development, especially when you throw in the wide receivers who are also young, still learning the route tree. But I think they figure and work things out in practice. This Tulane team is really good. I like Mensa. They're very risk, big time risk takers. Their defense is also very questionable. Um, I think this is a good opportunity for Oklahoma to, in a way, prepare themselves for that big time veer and shoot game that's coming against Tennessee. So they have to take Tulane seriously. I think Oklahoma wins this one. And in a shocking way, I think they cover the spread. I'm going to go 28 to 10 because that defense leads the country in turnovers, leads the country in turnover margin, and they're one of the tops in tackles for loss. They've been doing it. They just got to continue to do it. Something that Sooner fans are not used to, having a defense that actually carries you. Give me the Sooners. (laughs) Steven, who you got? Jay, thank you for answering my question. I appreciate it, brother. And um, if this game was in Tulane, I would pick Tulane to win the football game. I'm, I'm, I'm leaning th- th- this to me. I think this is a very close game. I think the Sooners are in trouble because of the fact of the the element of offensive lulls, right, and just not being able to put up points. It is extremely concerning only scoring 16 points against a bad Houston team. I'm sorry. Um, when I look at Mensa, and again, same thing we were talking about earlier about them pre- pushing the ball downfield, Mario Williams, you know, former Sooner Mario Williams, who has been, you know, very, very good so far this year, especially, you know, catching passes, chunk yardage downfield. I understand the success the OU defense has had, but it's kind of unfair to them to say, hey, lock all that up, and then we're still going to try to score 17 points and get by out here. And that can't be the case in OU. And so I'm thinking that, to your point, Jay, OU's offense is able to manufacture something. Get the run game going if you're OU. Whether I don't care if it's Tatum, Barnes, whoever, right? They got to get the run game going to help Jackson Arnold out. If you leave this game in his hands, both running and throwing, then the fourth quarter we're going to be texting Jay to make sure he's okay and his heart is fine because that, that, that will be problematic. I do think, though – I think Tulane's going to put up points, but I think OU's going to be able to manufacture some turnovers. Mensa can be careless with the ball, too. And the strip sacks concern me. Some of the picks concern me. I think he makes a couple mistakes, big ones in this game. And OU wins a very, very close, scary game. But they get a key non-offensive touchdown. Give me OU. Ty, who are you riding with? I will take OU, um, but I don't think they cover. Reluctantly. Right? Yeah, I I don't think they cover. Here's the thing. Jay, you're right about the offensive line, but one of my concerns for OU going into the season has reared its ugly head. I don't think the play calling with Seth Luttrell has been good at all. In fact, your first play last week, that jet sweep, fundamentally made no sense the way that it was blocked. You took their defensive end, and your tackle ran him right into the jet sweep. Brilliant. By all means, brilliant play design. Um, And you're not helping out your young quarterback. You have a young that right now is a one-read guy. If his first read isn't there, he's bailing out of the pocket, whether it's clean or not. And I just don't think Seth Luttrell has been very good at all. Um, And listen, I'm a UNT alum. I watched it firsthand here, and it wasn't good. Uh, They won games, but boy, howdy, was it ugly. That being said, I do love y'all's defense. I think your defense is fantastic. You need to establish a run. And like Steven said, if you don't establish a run against Tulane, who is really weak in the middle, if you can't run it down their throat, there are bigger issues that Oklahoma will have going into this season because this is a team that you should establish the run. I have Oklahoma winning. I do not have Oklahoma covering. You know, wrap us up. Hey, man, I got OU too as well. Uh, so that means OU's going to lose this game since we all picked them. Um, Look here, man. Uh, <laughs> Kansas State rushed for over 200 yards against Tulane. Okay. Um, 
like Todd said, this is the opportunity for OU to establish some kind of running game. Now, we understand, uh, look, I'm a big fan of beating Bo, and so he should be able to get this corrected throughout the season. Um, but if they don't get it corrected this week uh, with Tennessee coming up next, uh, there's going to be a lot of a lot of problems for OU starting next week on. But I think this is going to be a very close game as well, too. Um, I like Tulane a lot. I mean, I had I I stayed up last night kind of thinking about this game on which one I was going to pick. But I got OU winning this game, um, and I think they do cover in this game. I think they get a couple late touchdowns, uh, but that offense has to improve because they're not giving – any justice for their defense, man. Fair point. All right, let's fly through. We've got a few more. We got three more that we need to fly through. First off, we've got Oregon, Oregon State. The Civil War still exists. Kind of surprised, but I'm very proud of them for actually working things out and keeping the game going. Oregon's traveling to Oregon State, so they'll be in Corvallis as a 16 point favorite with over under sitting at 49 and a half. I'm going to go ahead and ride with Oregon, make it quick. I'm very surprised at the last two games by Oregon. You would have expected with all the talent they have that they've been blowing the doors off people. Nah, they ain't what it's looking like. Dylan Gabriel's putting up numbers, but they ain't putting up actual scores, which is wild to me. But I think Oregon goes out there. They handle business. I do not see them covering the spread because I won't pick them to cover the spread until they actually cover a real spread. Give me Oregon. Steven? Yeah, give me Oregon here as well. I don't feel great about it. I also don't feel great about seeing the Civil War happening in September. Uh, this and the yeah. Apple Cup are are late fall, early winter. That's early winter, late fall football. So it sucks that we're in this situation, but I'm glad, like you said, we have the game regardless. I just think that the more Dylan Gabriel and those guys get you know, the more reps together, the more that they'll be able to start to look like what they were supposed to look like. I just don't think if Oregon State still had Jonathan, if Jonathan Smith was still there and not at Michigan State and Damian Martinez and them guys were still there and Bolden was still there. Yeah, but I think I just think that Oregon State's lost a little too much firepower uh, to make this game honest how it should be. I don't think Oregon looks great again, but I think they survive. Give me Oregon. Ty. Well, listen, I might not understand this point system, but I, I, I have to be bold, right? <laughs> Give me Oregon State, and I'm going to tell you why. Oregon comes in with the 73rd ranked defense in the, or I'm sorry, the 73rd ranked offense in the nation. They wish their defense was, they have the 89th ranked defense in the nation. They played a Boise team close who, yes, Gene T's the best running back in the nation. Boise also has a defense outside the top 120 in the nation. Oregon State has three guys right now running the football that are all averaging over five per. Oregon is more talented. Yes, this is Oregon State's Super Bowl, right? This is the game for them that if they win it, it means everything. Oregon still has Ohio State. Like, Oregon still has some games down the road. Give me Oregon State to pull off the upset. All right. Nick, who you got? It's another one, man. I was thinking, you know, I switched my pick at the end, but I kept it, man. I got Oregon winning this game. They have more talent. They do. They got DG. They got the Evan Stewards. Um, I think we're going to look back um, at that game against Boise State, and I think we're going to realize Boise State was a really good team, right? And it was, a, you know, I think that was a pretty good win, you know, for them. Uh, but, you know, all the concerns are there. Ty's right. All the concerns are there for Oregon. This This offense should be humming. It should. And it's not. You got a veteran quarterback who's been in college for 15 years now in DG. Um, there, there should be, this should be continuity. <laughs> hey man, this should be a constant stream of like moving water for that offense, man. And it's not, you know. And they went out and, and you know, got a Stewart too, man. And Stewart's one of the best wide receivers in the country. So, I got Oregon winning this game. I don't think they cover. Um, but it's going to be a very, very close game, man. But give me Oregon just on town alone. All right, next game up, we've got Colorado taking on Colorado State. They'll be up there in Fort Collins. Colorado right now is a seven-point favorite after that Nebraska situation. And I got to give one thing to Colorado. Their second-half defenses have shown up. They've given up six points in four quarters, the second half of games. They don't start out very well on defense. 
they've got to start off very good on defense in this game. And the one thing for them is that Colorado State talks a lot more than they do. And that's something that we're all shocked about. Give me Colorado to win this game. And I actually think they cover the spread on this one. They've got to establish a run game, which they have not done, which just seems like a theme for a lot of teams in college football this year. Either you have a run game or you don't. And it's like glaring <laughs> right now. But I'm going to take Colorado to win this one. I actually think they cover the spread on this one. I, I think that they figure out and learn some stuff from Nebraska. Travis Hunter is probably one of, if not the best player in the country. Shadur is going to find a way to get him the ball. Hopefully they figure out a run game, but I don't think Colorado State's very good. Give me Colorado. Steven? Jay, I'm actually kind of in the same boat as you, man. I mean, th this is, let me be clear though. This is a referendum for prime at this point already in the season because the, the Big 12 schedule is so daunting and people are trying to identify where these wins going to come from, what's going to build momentum. He cannot lose this football game. They cannot lose this football mm -hmm. game or else they'll start to lose the locker room. So give me Colorado here just with everything that's on the line. And I think Colorado State, to your point, the trash talking that's been going on definitely fuels this rivalry. And I think it's pretty cool because they had a really good game last year. I think this is the Travis Hunter get back game. Henry Blackburn, we got to get you back in blood, brother. So, you know, I think this is a game where Travis Hunter really pops off and has just amazing performance. Uh, if not, we're asking way, 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 way bigger questions because it's Colorado State's team. It's not as good as I thought they'd be uh, coming into the season. I wasn't really impressed with them in week two against Northern Colorado. So I feel good taking Colorado here um, and actually covering, believe it or not. Uh, time to pop off and show them, right? Ty, who you got? Yeah, this is there were several games this week, guys, where I was like, man, I'm I'm ping ponging between what I want to pick, right? But I, I think at the end of the day, I'm gonna go Colorado because Colorado State, they've just left a little bit to be desired. Um and I think if it goes to a shootout against two teams that don't have great defenses, I'll take Colorado in that shootout because their wide receiver room is, is good. And I understand Shiloh isn't playing, but the defense hasn't exactly been the strong suit of Colorado when he has played, right? It is a loss, no doubt about it. You want him there healthy. But I think at the end of the day, I'm going to take Colorado just because if this is if this gets into a passing shootout, I'm gonna I'm gonna ride with the buffs. All right, Nick, we got Hey man, this is Colorado. Colorado has to win this game. Um, but they can't run the ball at all, man. They got to figure that out. I don't think it's going to happen this season. Uh, it might not ever happen at Colorado, to be honest with you. Um, I, look, man, I, I hope it does. They got too much talent at the wide receiver position, uh, you know, for them not to be able to run the ball and actually open up the pass a little bit more. Uh, but like Steven says, man, this is a game that I think Colorado has to win because after they win this game, if they do win this game, it might be the last one they get for a while. They got a pretty tough sled ahead of them. You know, they got Arizona, you know, like in two weeks after that. So they got a pretty tough sled, man. So they got to get this game. I can see that. That's good. And all right, across the board. So go ahead and fade us. Uh, last big matchup before we get into the big spreads, we've got Boston College in, oh, in Missouri. Well, well, we'll do UTSA in Texas first, and then we'll do Boston College Missouri at the end. But uh, UTA Texas, it's going to be the big spread of the week. We've got Texas at 35 and a half, and the spread keeps going up. Yeah, Texas is going to cover that spread. This is a game where, you know, even though they have, you know, next week they've got to start thinking about, you know, University of Louisiana Monroe, going to be a daunting planning session for that game. So I think Texas is going to go out there and be like, hey, we've got to preserve our bodies for that next week. They cover that spread very easily. and Give me Texas. Steven? Yeah, I'll be quick with this one. Uh, Texas, first night game of the season. I think Arch Manning probably starts the second half, gets a lot of work. John Tay Cook, uh, Wisner and those guys. Arch probably going to have 150 yards plus passing and a, maybe a couple touchdowns. Give me Texas to cover the 35 and a half. UTSA is not a good football team right now. They've been showing it. Ty, what you got? Yeah, give me Texas to cover. 
I don't I don't have too too much to say outside of that. Nick. Easy peasy, same thing. 35's easy. Next. He said 35's easy. Okay. We got Georgia riding against Kentucky. Um, it's another SEC matchup, but yeah, Georgia is only a 22 point favorite in in Lexington, which is a little odd. I figured it'd be a lot higher than that, but Georgia's been rolling. They've only given up six points this season and well, nine points in their last three games, which is even more just glaring, if anything. But I think Georgia goes in there. As Ty said before, Kentucky's offense looks like it's back in like early football when they didn't know how to have the forward pass. So give me Georgia to just blast and cover this spread. Steven? Uh, I'm going to go a little surprise here. Uh, I think Kentucky may have been also looking a little bit ahead past South Carolina last week. Uh, Mark Stoops and them, they, they, they run a, they're, they're better coached and they have a better program than what they showed, in my opinion. Now, this is also Brock Vandergriff's last stand against his former team. If not, then you're super fraudulent. But I like Kentucky to cover, right? It's what, 22? Something like 22 that? 22 right now, yeah. Ken- yeah, Kentucky is Kentucky's played Georgia okay the last few years. So yeah. I like Kentucky to 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 cover. Not me not that this game is gonna be worrisome for Georgia. I still have Georgia winning by three scores. I just don't think it'll be twenty two points. Hmm, so a twenty one point win. Makes sense. Ty, who you got? Give me Georgia to cover. Um I I don't disagree about that not looking like a normal stoops team. But it also looks like the team halfway quit. And if you aren't totally bought in, I don't know what to tell you, man. And like I said, the offense looks like it's from the 1919s. And if you can't test Georgia deep and you let them pin their ears back, you're in for a long, long day. I don't know. I, I, before the year, I would have thought more highly of Kentucky. But as of right now, I just... I think they have an uphill battle in front of them, um, but I, I like Georgia to cover this game. You know, hey man, give me Georgia to cover this man. Uh, you know, Georgia covered and some against Clemson, right? They won by what was it, thirty, thirty-one points. Um, Kentucky doesn't have near the talent, you know, that they have. Um, and I get it; it's at Kentucky, and I like Stoops. I do like Stoops a lot, but um, Georgia's just going to be too powerful, too strong, uh, too deep. You know, and so them uh, just being a deep team, just in the trenches, man, I think I think Georgia actually runs away with this game, and I think it might get really ugly here by the third quarter. All right, final game. we we'll fly through this one. We've got um, one of the early specials on the SEC Network, which sucks. This needs to be nationally televised. We've got Boston College traveling to Missouri, playing out there in Columbia. Right now, Missouri is a 15-and-a-half-point favorite. Wow. Especially after Boston College has the, I guess you could say, the two upsets that they've shown in theory. Florida State game was fantastic. Duquesne, we knew they was going to destroy them. But Florida State game either shows that Boston College is solid or Florida State's frauds, which I think they're more frauds than anything because we're seeing that exposed the next week. So I think Missouri wins this game. I don't think they cover. I think that Boston College does a really good job of running it, and they burn a lot of clock, right? I think they're going to be eating up the clock in this game, and Missouri as fast as they're going to like to score. Bill O'Brien has done pretty good with this team. Like, it's just kind of shocking how that how well they played. I'll give them that in his first year. It's like they turned the program around. So give me Give me Missouri to win, but I think Boston College covers this spread. I think it's a 14-point win, so they don't hit the 15-and-a-half spread. Steven, who you got? So I think this is going to be a really fun football game. Let me just say that first off. Uh, yes. Boston College, they have the Sheehan-Kyler Murray, Kyler Murray over there playing quarterback. Um, the Walmart-Kyler Murray out there. Good Whatever night, version you, you want to – Yo, great value, Kyler Murray out there playing quarterback. That 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 guy is a menace, okay? So he's going to cause some problems. I don't think Missouri's 89-0 to start to the season will hold up, right? Because he's going to come in there and, and really cause some issues. But I think Brady Cook 
Luther Burden, Nate Noel, Marcus Carroll at running back, those two guys at running back, nobody's really popped off yet. They've been chilling. They've been getting a lot of people reps. They, they've they been winning comfortably. This is going to be the game where Luther Bird, you know, you remember the Luther Burden from last year with 150 yards receiving. You'll see Noel and and, and, and uh, uh, Marcus Carroll start to pop off. And, and Brady Cook, also one of the most underrated quarterbacks in the country. Uh, give me Mizzou, and I do think they cover the spread. Ooh, all right. Ty, who you got? I'll take Missouri. Um, the, now covering is interesting. I, that's going to be, that's going to be really fascinating to whether they can cover, but I'll let you know why I'm taking Missouri as good of a team as Boston colleges. And I think Boston college is going to make this interesting. There were times in the Florida state game that Florida state had wide receivers running open and the opportunities were there for the taking. Brady cook is not going to miss them like DJU is, or at least he's going to miss them at a far lower percentage than did DJU. Plus, I think that Missouri has a better wide receiver room than Florida State does. In fact, I think Missouri is better at every area of the ball than Florida State is. So I'm going to take Missouri covering, though, man. I don't know. That's fascinating. I'm going to say they don't cover, but I do. Jay, I agree with you. I think that it it is that hairline for me. I I could see a 14-point win, but the 15 and a half, that's where it's like, Really ticky tack. So yeah, give me Mizzou though. All right, Nick, wrap us up. Put the ball on it. Hey man, give me Missouri. All right, you know, so somebody come fade us again, man. Give me Missouri. I like Missouri, <laughs> man. Um, Cook is very underrated. Um, I love Luther Burden. Weiss had a really good game too last game. Look, look, man. I'm one of those fans that I thought I didn't know where they were going to get their actual running game once they lost Schrader. Man, they loaded up, you know, getting the guy from App State, Nasty Nate. That's what I'm going to start calling from now on because he looked really good in those last two games. Man, Steven tried to warn me about that about three months ago. Um, but, yeah, man, give me give me Missouri. And I do think they cover, man. I think Nate goes off this game, man. I, I really do. I think he goes off this game. Okay. All right. Well, that's what we have. It. Let's look at these picks this week and see um, what we got. Looks good. Looks like uh, everybody's got themselves a nice little setup. We've got our two, well, three picks that are different with me at Arizona. You got Purdue, and then you've got Oregon State, and then the Kentucky covering the spread, which I was leaning that direction too, Stephen, so I understand that. And Mortal Lock, I'm going to toss mine out there real quick. Y'all throw y'all's out there. I'm going with Bama winning their game I'm not on the money line. So give me Bama as my Mortal Lock. We're going to ride with that because they better win that game. Stephen? I'm going with Pitt over West Virginia in the backyard brawl. Um, Ooh, Eli Holstein, another 2023 QB who's who's out here balling. Desmond Reed is the best running back in the country that nobody knows, that nobody knows. Pitt's running back, Desmond Reed, y'all go check him out. He averages eight yards per carry. He is dynamite. They have a dynamite runner back there. Real small dude from Miami. Reminds me of them West Virginia backs from back in the day, which is ir- ironic because he about to do Love it to it. them. Love it. Ty, mortal lock. Then we're going to wrap up. Yeah, my mm-hmm. mortal lock was going to be Alabama covering the spread, but you you, you took that one, right? Um, so I guess I'll change it up. Yeah, I know. My mortal lock is now that Oregon does not cover and that Oregon State gets uh, gets that done. They They cover the spread. Oregon State, all right. And uh, Nick, who's your mortal lock for the week? My Probably mortal lock is Florida's going to beat A and M. All right, uh, so A and M's favorite in that game by three and a half points. I got Florida wow. winning that Ooh, game. Florida money yes. line. Connor Wagman is not playing, right, Stephen? I don't think he's playing, right? You know, so there's, there's some news. Yeah. It's questionable. It's up and down. I think I think Lagway comes in and does this thing, and he beats A and M. And I think Florida just outright wins the game. All right, that's some good stuff right there. Well, thank all of y'all for pulling up to the College Football Prediction Roundtable presented here on the Bleacher Report app exclusively. I'm Jay, Stephen, Ty, and Nick. We appreciate it, and uh, yeah, good luck, and we'll see you all next week. Peace.